welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing another review style video, but first, as you might be able to tell, a little bit of my background has changed. I am sitting in my little makeup area corner of my room, and as you can see, I no longer have the bookshelf. Whoa, totally pale. But I no longer have the bookshelf. I did buy a set of drawers from Ikea because um, I live in Missouri, and Kansas finally got an Ikea, so I actually had one within driving distance and decided to pick up something to organize my makeup in. So if you guys would like to see an updated makeup collection, I would love to do it for you. So just let me know in the comments if that's something you would like to see. And um, secondly, if it looks like I have a booger in my nose, I don't. I actually got my nose pierced recently, so um, it's not a booger. Although the child at work that I had as a customer today, <laughs> she saw me, and um, obviously, you know, she's considerably shorter than I am and she like I watched her she was like staring at me and I watched her she walked over to her mom and she was like she's got a booger in her nose and then her mom her mom her mom her mom started laughing and I was like I promise it's not a booger it's just the metal from my nose piercing so yeah embarrassing story of the day kind of so let's go ahead and jump into the video so as you can probably tell from the title, I'm going to be reviewing a Taylor Swift's album in 1989. So 1989 came out in October on the 27th, and the um, CD that you can buy on your phone, like on iTunes, has 13 tracks, and then the deluxe edition, which is the one I have, has 19 tracks, but really it's like 18 tracks because the number 18 and 19 tracks are voice memos, so it's of like Taylor talking and... Um, explaining how she wrote like these two specific songs and stuff so pretty cool but you do get a couple extra tracks um the tracks that you don't get on the album are wonderland you are in love and new romantics which honestly guys you should just go to the store and buy the deluxe edition you won't regret it so I am pretty much in love with this album. I will have to admit, first when I heard all of the samples, like back in October, because of course I was up at midnight, you know, ready to sample them, and um, listening to all of them, I was just like, mm, not feeling it. But um, recently I did download the entire album and I am in love. Almost every single track is amazing. There's probably like one or two that I don't like listen to that much, but they're still really good songs. She is a lyrical genius. Like honestly, her lyrics are just the best. I am so excited for the future because obviously when she stops performing live and you know stops singing, she's still gonna be an amazing writer for all of the upcoming artists um, you know that come around as time goes by. So I'm super excited just for where she goes in life. I just, I love her. And also I will have to say that it seems like a lot of the songs kind of revolve, not a lot of the songs, but it seems like at least three-fourths of the album seem to kind of revolve around Harry Styles, um, and I personally do not mind whatsoever. <laughs> I think that they are the cutest thing together, and I would love it if they started dating again, although highly unlikely. I would just, I would love it. Think of all the beautiful music that could be written for us. Like, I would... Ugh. Harry Styles is my favorite. Like, if you don't follow me on Tumblr, you probably should. I am obsessed. It is so sad. I'm basically just gonna run through the track list and let you guys get like a little clip of the song and what it sounds like and then give you my generalized opinion of it. So track number one on the album is Welcome to New York. New York. Welcome to New York. enjoy this song at first I wasn't so sure of it but it kind of just makes me want to like catch a plane to JFK and you know play this in my headphones walking out of the airport just excited to explore New York City it's honestly it's probably better it's kind of like party in the USA except party in New York with Taylor Swift which is a dream of mine <laughs> so track number two as most of the world knows is blank space you leave cause darling I'm a nightmare dressed like a daydream so it's gonna be forever or it's gonna go down and I am definitely one of those people who for the longest time was singing Starbucks lovers until one of the people on the radio when I was listening to it one day on my way to work said hey for those of you who think it's Starbucks lovers it's not it's long list of ex lovers Weird, I know. So track number three is Style. And I got the red lip, classic thing that you like, and then we go crashing down. And of course, we all think of Harry Styles. I mean, come on, it's only one letter away from his last name. I personally do love the song. I think it's awesome. I love listening to it. It's just so great to, like, drive to. Like, if I have my headphones in the car, like, it's just, it's just perfect. Number four is Out of the Woods. Necklace hanging from my neck. We couldn't quite forget when we decided. 
This one I did hear specifically was about Harry Styles, and I honestly, the first time I heard this song, I absolutely hated it. Like, I think she released it as a single um, before she released the whole album, and I was not into it at all. But as soon as I downloaded the album and I actually listened to the song and all of the lyrics, I fell in love. The song is amazing. The lyrics are spectacular, and I just... I can't get over it. I really wish, I think Taylor Swift and Harry Styles should just make up right now because she clearly, I mean, this album is just, mm. But track number five is All You Had To Do Was Stay. And I was actually reading a bunch of articles because I did a bunch of Googling after I downloaded the album and I heard that this was the song that she wrote after her breakup with Harry Styles, so I think this is also about Harry, and I also simultaneously love it very, very much. <laughs> Number six is Shake It Off. <laughs> but I can't make them stay. At least that's what people say. Mm -mm. Which was another big hit for her on the album, although I'm not a big fan of it. It's honestly probably my least listened to song from the album. Um, it's really good and inspirational for, you know, when you're in the mood to listen to that kind of song, but it's just not something I want to be like, oh yeah, I want to listen to that one. I don't know. I just feel like I liked it the first two or three times, and then I was just kind of over it. So not one of my favorites from the album. The track number seven is I Wish You Would. I wish you would come back. Wish I never hung up the phone like I did. Wish you knew that. I never forget you as long as I And I heard this one was about Jake Gyllenhaal, which I honestly don't even remember them dating, but you know. And I think I also read somewhere that um, this was kind of like a sequel to I Almost Do from her Red album. And I guess they do kind of sound a little similar, but I don't know. I think the song's really good. I find it super catchy and I love listening to it. Track number eight is Bad Blood. Now we got bad blood. And then I read online that this was about Katy Perry. I also didn't know that Taylor Swift and Katy Perry had any beef with each other. Like, I didn't know that they didn't like each other or that something went down. So anyways, Bad Blood's also super catchy. Um, I don't listen to it too often just because I, there's just so many songs. Like, so many other songs on here I just ugh, cannot get enough of right now. But Bad Blood is a really good one. Number nine is one of my all-time favorites, and it is Wildest Dreams. just so amazing. I pretty much listen to it all day today if that tells you any kind of feeling I have towards it. <laughs> Track number 10 is How You Get The Girl. This song kind of reminds me of some of her older stuff like from Speak Now. It just reminds me of something so cute and charming when she's telling a little story in the song. So I just really love it and it's just super catchy. Number 11 is This Love. This love came too many times so I'm still kind of getting a feel for it don't really have much of an opinion on this song yet so number 12 on the album is I know places this one is okay it's just kind of one that I tend to skip over because there are just like so many other songs on the album over this one so again not my favorite Number 13 is Clean. And by morning, gone was any trace of you. I think I am finally clean. This song is absolutely amazing. Hands down, one of the best from the album. I am obsessed. It's just perfect. It just describes like everything you want like a song to say about like after you get over like a harsh breakup or you know you finally get that person out of your mind clean is just the song to go to it's the best these next three tracks are the ones that are not on the regular cd that you can get on like itunes but this is from the deluxe edition so 14 is wonderland, wonderland. you and i got lost in it and life was never worse but never better it's not bad again it's not my favorite um, but it is catchy um, I just kind of have to be in a certain mood to want to listen to it 15 is you are in love you 
This song is so good. It's so, so good. I was listening to it on the way home and I was like, oh my goodness, this song is just perfect. And it's just, I don't, I can't even put it into words. Like you guys literally have to listen to every single song on this album. You will know what I'm talking about. You will just feel it. Like when you love a song, you just, you just know. And then lastly for the album is number 16, which is New Romantic. It's kind of like a satirical song. Um, she's kind of singing about, you know, how ironic and messed up our new, like how we date nowadays, I guess. And it's just really funny and it's really good. And I love the chorus. It's just like so, yeah, you know, like that's the best way I could put it. I'm sorry if this video was completely redundant, but... So like I said, number 18 and 19 were just voice memos of her talking and telling us about how she created these two songs. Um, and... It's just kind of a cool way to get like a sneak peek into how she makes her magic. So um, yeah, I'm in love with this album. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I know it's kind of random for my channel, but um, yeah, I'm super obsessed with Taylor Swift. I have always been a fan of hers. She originally came out when I was um, in like seventh grade. Like that's when she like really kind of came on the scene and it was her, I think it's like the Tim McGraw album. I bought that one from Walmart and I didn't get too into Fearless until like probably high school, like almost halfway through high school and then Speak Now was my all-time favorite album of hers. Well, I can't say all-time now, but it was my all-time favorite album and then Red was okay. Um, I definitely liked a couple of the songs on there. I didn't get as into it as 1989 though. I'm seriously just completely blown away by 1989. I absolutely love it and I think the songs are amazing. I love her lyrics. Her writing is incredible. So I definitely recommend you guys check her out. I will leave, well, check her out like she's, <laughs> like you don't know who Taylor Swift is, right? Anyways, I will try to leave a link to each song in the down bar if I can find them here on YouTube. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye guys! And every